Hello everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger, and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In today's episode, we're going to be installing the trim actuator. So it's going to uh, go on the from the fuselage up to either the horizontal stabilizer or the elevator, and I think it's the elevator. So, so stick with me, and we'll uh, get into the action. So I'm going to dig into a box here of the fuselage kit. And it's already on the table. Actuator, electric trim, one each. That's it. 61012. That's the only one I have, so it has to be that one. Alright, trim actuator 61012.101. Let's verify the dot 101. Yep. Okay, uh, I'm gonna find the rest of these parts. Press the bearing into the hole on the fixed end of the of the actuator. I'm not really looking forward to pressing more bearings because they've been a bugger. So I guess I'll have to do it. So let's get to it. For, you have to break out the uh, trusty inventory list, so I'll grab that. So on the inventory list, we just uh, look for the part that we can't find and figure out what box it's in. It's pretty handy to keep the old inventory binder around. I wish it was typed up in an Excel format or something so I could just search for it, that would help me. A little bit faster, but probably typing that up might take me a week. So uh, I just find the part number and then I scroll through many part numbers here and see if I could find what box it's supposed to be in. And as usual, I went a little too fast and it was the actual very first one I should have been looking for. So says it's in box number two, and I got one of them, so let me go find it. cases where I pulled the parts from parts boxes and then I get down to this last one here this uh, collar trim actuator the 61012.501 and I go look for that in the inventory and it takes me to box 8 and I find this which is the trim actuator install kit and it ends up coming out with the hose clamp the collar that I was looking for um, this bolt right here, which you can't see because my camera's not adjusted right. So this bolt, which I pulled in the package, and then two of the nylon washers, but uh, this one, well, it does say two nylon washers, but I've already pulled them. Um, it doesn't come up with this bolt, and it comes up with one of the nuts, which I'm assuming is for the 41, and two of the 61012s, which are color kits, they're washers, and it says two, but I need three. So I'm gonna use the three, and I'm gonna put these extra parts into the other parts bags that have these in them. So here we go, moving on. One thing I've found out is that these bearings and bushings don't like to fit without some sanding, so I'm just gonna test fit them make sure they fit without sanding, otherwise I have to pause and do a bunch of sanding, which sometimes takes quite a while. Well, that one actually fits. That's awesome. Press the bearing into the hole on the fixed end of the actuator, and I need some bearing lock. And if you're ever unsure about that, you can just turn in the book back to the 
table of contents, and we'll do that just to double check. Make sure we're not doing something we're not supposed to, so liquid bearing lock. Builder's tips section. Bonding, and it shows me liquid bearing lock. Liquid thread and bearing lock. Loctite 242 medium strength thread blocker. Also labeled as Loctite removable strength thread blocker. Thread locker, and it's blue. So not the retaining compound that I was looking at. Good thing we looked. Well, let me go get the right thing. All right, we got it. Loctite blue 242. So we'll apply a little bit of that and slide it into the hole in the fixed end of the actuator. Wipe it on your pants, of course. Okay, that is in. Remove the rod end and check the nut and check nut from the actuator arm. And what is that? The rod end and check nut, I'm assuming that's this. Slide the trim actuator collar and steel clamp over the actuator arm as shown in figure HTA. In, in figure HTA 11. In figure H, maybe? Okay, remove the rod end and check nut from the actuator. Did that. Slide the collar and steel clamp over the actuator arm. Just the collar. I assume that slot is for that. A lot of assuming. Okay, and my clamp. Replace the check nut and rod end and tighten the check nut. Position the mounting hole of the collar in line with the fuselage mounting tabs. Ten to fifteen inch pounds. So a couple little pickles I ran into as uh, as I was moving along. Um, right over here, there's supposed to be a nylon wa or a metal washer, nylon washer, then the bolt comes through, then a nylon and a metal, and then it doesn't really show this, but I'm assuming the washer, then a metal washer, and the nut. So I couldn't get the two metal and the two nylon in there without bending the tabs out, which I'm not really sure if that's supposed to happen. And then this up here doesn't really line up you can see that real well um, so the horizontal stabilizer 
is about right there. And I have to pull this over to get it to go inside. Then, just before I did that, I realized that these holes weren't reamed, and that one right there isn't reamed, and I can't really get to them. I can get to these two, which I did, but I can't really get to those two. So right now, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna ream those, because turning the reamer by hand is like trying to drill a hole in a piece of wood with just your fingers and a drill bit and it's a bugger so that doesn't fit in there so i'm trying to get those holes reamed out because as it turns out something gets bolted in there but the bolts won't go through the holes without reaming them so i went back and looked through the instructions and i saw absolutely nothing talking about reaming those two or those four holes beforehand um so it's possible that it was just overlooked in the instructions, but I will probably try to bring that up to KitFox as I go along. I'm trying to make notes and uh, come up with some little ideas on tips and tricks, how, how to help them uh, make their instructions a little bit better for someone like me who's never done this before. So um, bear with me as I ream those holes out or figure out how to do it, and I'll bring you guys right back into the action. All right, so with a little perseverance, I got through there. So now my my bolts go through all the way. It is a bugger reaming those without being able to put a T-head or some sort of holder on the end. I basically put the the reamer in there. This is the, the holder. You kind of put it in there just like a drill bit and tighten it up. But otherwise, you have to stick this thing in the hole straight is the best way to do it and spin it by hand and most of the time you can't because as soon as it hits some paint or metal so then I'll have to grab this side of it with the vice grip and give it a quarter turn take the vice grip off give it another quarter turn uh, for about a million and a half turns and then pretty soon you've got a nice smooth hole so it's very simple and uh, is it's a very fast process so it only took me about an hour to get those so without further ado we'll uh, get going and hopefully install the rest the upper half of this uh, actuator and put in the scissor link arm which goes on the back two holes so here we go Twenty to twenty-five inch pounds. All right, about there. The wrench is starting to turn. So I got that in. Got it tightened up. Twenty to twenty-five inch pounds, and that was super tight. So. Getting those washers on the inside and getting the bolt through the washer, then through that knuckle, then through the other washer, and then out the other side, it was like working some magic. So I did that. So we'll move on to the next step. I've got to turn the page, so I gotta move the camera, so stand by. 
completing a step. So, all right, moving on to the next page. Stabilizer mounting tabs. Looks like I have to fabricate a scissor link. If prefab kit was purchased, skip step 34. Well, hopefully I purchased this item. So I'm going to search for it now. I've got to break out the trusty inventory list. We're going to fabricate three scissor links from the material provided. However, we bought the prefab kit, so we have the scissor links. Thank God. Um, around the end of the links, they'll play up. Paint the scissors. I don't have to paint them because they're stainless steel. Assemble the rather formidable stack of washers and spacers that together com compromise the scissor link assembly. Note that the standard thickness washers are shown in white, the thin washers are shown in black, and the nylon washers are shown in gray. To try to make the assembly easier to understand, tighten the castle nuts finger tight only. The cotter pins can be bent over completely now as the adjustments that must be made later on do not require the removal of the nuts. So I've got scissor links. I've got two AN3-5 bolts, AN3-7, one of those. That's the long one. And I've got the castle nuts. I've got the washers, the AN960-10L of those. I've got eight of the AN960s, they're the fatties, and I've got six of the nylons. Cotter pins I didn't grab yet. Um, anyone 072, it's in box five. This box five. Three cotter pins, three, not thirty. There's three. Now I have everything, so it's like I take a single piece and I go with the do a little underlining. Pin washers are black, nylon washers are gray. Standard thickness are shown in white. Nylon on both sides, followed by thin washer, thin washer, followed by two and two of the fatties. So those go in the front lobe AM3-7, which I have one of, enters from the left side. I'm sure these are all gonna fall on the floor here in a second. Here's one. Still perfecting my camera skills so right behind the trim trim actuator I'm putting that stack of washers in here and putting the bolt through and since everything is super tight I kind of have to thread it through my hand I'll get it the rest of the way in a little bit and that will get one of the thin washer and a castle nut on it and a cotter key so we'll get to that in a little bit. So we'll do thin washer, castle nut, and a cotter key. Now on the bottom of that, we get two of the nylons in between that other link. And we'll get standard size on the outside. Let's here. Two more standards on the outside. We we'll get two castle nuts. The forward is that way, so left side, along with the cotter keys. That should be really easy. The bolts go in from the right. So two nylons, thicker bolt, to the standard size. Bottom. So 
standard washer, bolt. This one's gonna go through the trim actuator. That'll be nylon. And then I'll follow it up with the same thing on the other side. So I need to turn this tab a little bit. There we go. Everything is very tight. Okay, they're in. So now, now it's nylon. And the nylon. Then the link. And the castle nuts. And it'll be cotter keys. So I can put the washer and it's a thin washer because it's dark gray. And the castle nut on the top piece. And I'm going to pull that through. Okay, snug. I'm not sure if it needs torque yet, so I'll check that in a minute. Snug. Same at the bottom. Snug. Tighten the castle nuts, finger tight only. Okay, that answers my question. Now I'll back them all off and tighten them with my fingers. Finger tight, finger tight, finger tight. Cotter keys. I have no idea where the holes are. There they are. In order to get the cotter key in, it's going to have to be more than finger tight. Most things line up very well. Some things line up pretty close. Pretty sure that's going to need another turn to go in and through to the other side. Too tight and I imagine this won't turn. So do I take off a washer? Do I call Kit Fox? Probably should call Kit Fox and ask. Turn the bolt so that it's vertical. Just push it right in there. Of course, it might go. So, might have to get out the percussive instruments. So, this one looks like it will go. So, we'll put it in. Look at there, I got one in. One out of three. And this two is vertical. Oh, look at there. Two out of three. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just tighten this one a little bit more so that we can get it in there. Like 
it should go. Loose and it just a little bit more again. So I don't want that binding. Okay, there's the hole. Cut it and goes through just fine. That was uh, a little painful. So I don't really have much in the in the department of electrical tools, so I should probably get a wire stripper or a crimper or something like that. So I don't know if anybody saw anything in the video that uh, maybe I did wrong or I could have done better, but if you wanna leave me a comment and let me know, I'd sure appreciate it. So I'm gonna turn the page and see what's next. So I turned the page and it was intentionally left blank. So that means I'm moving on to a new chapter. And the new chapter is fuselage assembly. Yes! So stick with me as we uh, venture on and hopefully I get to bolt something on or screw something into the fuselage and get away from the tail section. So thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, the subscribe button, and stay tuned for future content. Thanks.